Hey guys, this is Lance. This is a little video on steering algorithms and some really nasty levels of geometry. Um, let's say, for example, that you needed to steer a vehicle somewhere. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a nice 164th scale tractor to demonstrate this. If you've got some target line that you're trying to get to and the tractor is not on that line, you need to know three main things to get to it. You need to know what heading the machine is facing. You need to know where the machine is at relative to the line, and you need to know how fast you're going. If you're going really, really fast versus really slow, you could come into the line a lot slower, um, or more aggressively, I should say. So getting those three bits of information, you can get all three of those from GPS, but the problem is is that everything from, GP, from a GPS receiver is old data by the time you get it, and it's not very old, but it, it may be just a one-fifth of a second or so delay from the time that the receiver generates that position info until you get it in a computer and can process it into something you can use. Um, the speed data really isn't that big of a deal because in agriculture we don't change speed very much and even the difference between four and five miles an hour isn't a huge thing and the speed data will get, up, get updated quickly enough. You may end up with a few inches of overshoot but it, as soon as the speed info catches up in the system that'll quickly uh, get cancelled out and corrected for. Now, um, position's pretty easy because that's just a single point from the GPS receiver. And so wherever that receiver is, if it's on the back of the cab, like right above the rear axle, the center of the rear axle, or if it's on the front of the cab, or maybe it's up on the hood somewhere, um, that's pretty easy to deal with too. It's just a point somewhere, and, and wherever that point is, you can model the tractor and determine how far you are from the line, wherever that receiver is at. The trickiest of these three is the heading of the machine and to get that info at any moment in time. Now, since heading is such a critical thing in steering, we usually use inertial sensors, um, like a gyroscope, uh, which is measuring the yaw axis, so your rate of rotation, left and right, um, about the, the vertical axis. And that gives you some, some newer data than what you can get just from the GPS receiver alone. And typically with a single antenna GPS receiver, you can't get yaw data from that anyway. It's just a, a single point is all it gives you. Now, a GPS receiver can give you heading information, but only based on where you've been. Um, kind of a, a trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, based on where you've been. Um, Auto Farm has this kind of figured out with a two antenna system, where they have two antennas up on the cab. And that, that is able to tell, that, uh, tell the computer what the actual heading of the machine is at any moment in time even while well stopped. Um, it doesn't have to initialize, it doesn't have to drive anywhere when it boots up because it knows what the heading is just from the two antennas that are on the roof at any time. Which is why that particular system works so ex exceptionally well in, in slow speed applications like below one mile an hour, um, which is commonly used in vegetable and tree planting, stuff like that. Um, but for the general row crop stuff that we're doing, we're usually moving four miles an hour or faster, so we don't really have to do that, but there's still a couple problems there. Getting the heading data is how do you generate an actual heading of the machine right now compared to where you've been previously. And so here's a, a bit of a sketch on how you can do that. Um, the simplest method, well, let me explain this. Let's just say that the tractor was here and it's driving around some circle. What, what you'll want to notice here is that there's these two arcs. The inside one would be the arc where the rear axle, the center of the rear axle, is going to follow that arc. And the outside circle would be where the nose of the tractor is as it goes through a turn. Um, you'll notice that the farther you are from that main axis, the, the farther, the bigger the, di the radius of that circle is. Which is fine, but the problem is, is that GPS receiver may be right above the rear axle, it may be at the front of the cab, it may be up on the nose. And based on where that's at, it's hard to, to get an idea of exactly what the heading is at a particular moment in time when you get new position data. And you have to know what the exact heading of the machine is in order to properly merge that in with the yaw sensor data to get current heading information. If you're, you're merging in incorrect data into one side of that algorithm, you get crap data out and that doesn't work at all. So in this particular instance, the, the simplest most rudimentary way of measuring position data is just to measure the heading between the last two points in the, from the receiver, um, whatever the most recent point is, and the point right before that. So let's just say, for example, that you had a position point here, and then you measured another position point here. Now this is a lot more travel than you would typically get from a receiver at 5 or 10 hertz, but 
um, it's a lot more visible in this scenario. So the heading between those two points would be something like this, which is not really the case because the heading of the tractor isn't that angle. Um, likewise, if you had the receiver up on the front of the tractor, up on the nose, it would, it would tell you that the heading is that, which also isn't parallel to what this line is, the actual heading of the machine here. So that's kind of the ugly way of doing it, and it doesn't really work very well because it's very dependent upon speed of travel, how fast you're getting data points, and where that receiver is located, well, where the antenna is located on the, on the machine. So there's a, another way to do this that's uh, considerably uglier in terms of geometry needed to do, and that's by measuring from any three points. If you have three data points anywhere in a XY coordinate system, you can determine where the center of the circle is. And from that, you're able to do some additional nasty math with a right angle, right triangle algorithm to figure out where the rear axle might be in terms of heading around the, the machine. So if you have a data point here, here, and here, you can generate that center point and then say, okay, so I need to come back the length of whatever that distance is, which is a known variable, the distance from the antenna to the rear axle. So that gives you an angle of this. And if you know this angle, and you know you're driving to the to a counterclockwise direction, then you just add 90 degrees left of that, and you'll have the heading of the machine. If you know of any other ways, let me know. I'm, I'm curious if there's other ways, possibly, to uh, get heading information from two or three points out of a GPS receiver. Um, this particular method with the circle works really well when the antenna is very close to the rear axle. The, the tail method, the trail breadcrumb method, works really well when the receiver is way out front, especially if you set the length of that breadcrumb trail to the length between the, the antenna and the rear axle. But neither one works really well when it's kind of in that middle ground, when it's like on the antenna. So maybe there's a hybrid that we could do that uh, would do both of those combined or something. Let me know. Thanks.